All right, guys, welcome to Catapult Carnage. My name's Chris, and today we're going to go over the only banned video for slingshots on YouTube that you need to watch. So stay tuned and let's get started. <music> Bands, where do you start, where do you begin? It can be a bit overwhelming and hopefully today I'm going to teach you some stuff that's going to make it a little bit easier for you to make the choices that are right for you. So let's start off with brands of band. Um, I predominantly use GZK band. GZK um, there's a number of reasons why I use this. The number one reason being that they have three predominant colors in which they sell. They have the yellow, green, and black. And within them colors, they have 12 different thicknesses. You've got 0 0.45, 0 0.5, 0 0.54, 0 0.8, 0 0.62, 0 0.66, 0 0.72, 0 0.76, 0.8, 0.9, and one mil. Sorry for rhyming all them off to you, but a lot of people are going to ask what thickness is. So within every colour of band that GZK sells, you have 12 thicknesses. I prefer this to other brands of band, the likes of other popular brands being Precise and Sumiki, as well as a few others. Um, every time you go up or down a thickness, every thickness that they sell or they do um, is a different colour. They don't have the same colours for... Um, different thicknesses and you're going to say why does that matter it matters because the different colored dyes believe it or not affect the latex which is the natural substance your bands are made out of differently um, the slingshot community has known this for a long time um, latex is natural color is like a you'll have seen it natural latex you can uh, google it um, it's an ambery, yellowish, see-through type colour. That's pure latex on its own. It doesn't really like sunlight. So that's why a lot of guys dye the bands. It also really do it doesn't like cold weather. So the dye, um, dyes stiffen the bands up a bit. Now the yellow, green and black GZK and like for like thicknesses, it's like light, medium and black being heavy. So if you had a 0.5 band, which is 0.5 means half a mil. If you had a 0.5 band in yellow, a 0.5 band in green and a 0.5 band in black, you'll find that the that's how it would be. It would be light, medium and heavy, same band, same taper. So why does it matter that um, GZK, you know, why does it matter that I like the GZK because the colours are the same throughout the thicknesses? Well, it matters if you want to go up and down in, in a band thickness for whatever reason, whatever the reason might be. You might want to go up and down to shoot heavier ammo. You might want to shoot at longer distance. You might want to shoot with more power, with greater speed. Um, you might want a slightly thicker band to help withstand cold temperatures. So... This is why the, uh, that I like the GZK because I can be shooting a 0.5 GZK band in summer and I can be shooting a 0.66 in the winter. And although that it's a thicker band with a heavier draw, the characteristics of the latex um, and the characteristics of the performance are more similar than what they would be if you know you were shooting a different color band because as I said the dye affects the the uh, performance differently um, an example recently I had samples of a brand of band that I um, was sent and I was sent a 0 0.55 a 0 0.65 and a 0 0.75 something like that right and they were all different colors, but they were the same brand of latex. And the 0.65 was a heavier draw. Um, it had less of a stretch ratio and it was faster than the 0.75 mil band. So the 0.65 mil band was a more powerful um, band, you know, so 
You won't get that with GZK. By the way, um, I have to buy these bands the same as everybody else. I don't make one shilling from telling you to buy these bands. This is my own personal experience. Um, and every band has inconsistencies. Like That's another thing you have to take into consideration. Some are better than others. GZK is quite good. It performs similar, similar, similarly. Similar, you know the word I'm trying to say. Performs relatively the same. Um, across different batches you would get you know that was a thing an issue we had with theraband you know theraband could have varying thicknesses throughout this same roll of stuff that you were buying which isn't a good thing so gzk is always pretty bang on it and uh, it's something i like so across our thicknesses let me give you examples and i'll put them up here somewhere of what you can shoot so the 0.45 would be for six seven mil steel 0.45 or 0.5 the 0.5 to the 0.62 maybe even sometimes 0.66 for 8 mil steel um, you could even shoot a, a, a very thin band of 0.72 with 8 mil steel that would be good for cold weather but typically you're going to for 8 mil steel you're going to be in the 0.5s touching 0.6 extreme scenarios climate differences, um, whatever, you might go a wee bit heavier, but generally 8 mil steel, you'll be in that 0 0.5 zone. So 0 0.6, probably to 0 0.8 for the 9.5 mil steel guys, the 3 8 mil steel, um, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Um, 0 0.8 and up will be for the heavy ammo guys, that the lead launchers. Um, 0.8 will be your lighter caliber, your lighter weight lead shot, like your 8, 9, 10 mil. And then the heavier you go, you, you know, your 1, one mil band will be for your 14, 16 mil lead, 14 mil steel, them type of projectiles. And GZK actually uh, also does a super thick band now, which is, I think he does 1.1 and 1.2 mil. So GZK does 14 different thicknesses. Um, so I think that's that. If you if you have any questions about what you or on your thicknesses, drop it in the comments and, and I'll get back to you. And you can start a you guys can talk amongst yourselves about what you like to use for what tapering and stuff. Typically your tapers, um, I cut my tapers out on these jigs because it's quick and easy. For many years, and in previous videos, I've shown how to use steel rulers. You can use a steel ruler, a self-healing mat, a rotary cutter. You can uh, lay out your sheet of latex, cut it to length, um, and mark your tapers on there. How do you know what length you need to cut your bands at? Right. I shoot my bands with a 5.5 stretch ratio so that means when my bands are their active length which means their length that they are when they are tied to the frame and the pouch is tied on my active length will stretch five and a half times to get to my anchor point some people use different stretch ratios i found five and a half to be pretty good for me and it's very common um, if you want longer life out your bands, you could stretch five times or four and a half times. So, you want to, if you, I assume you know where your anchor point is. If not, go and watch me how to shoot videos, how to aim videos. Um, you need to let a few shots go. You need to find out where your anchor point is going to be. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your tape measure. You're going to hold the tape in this hand, draw it back with this hand, take it round, look at your number, okay? Divide that number by 5.5 and that is the length that you should attach the bands to your catapult at. So when you cut them off the roll, I suggest making them, depending on the frame, wrap and tuck or whatever, but make them 30mm longer. Than that, that number that you just determined from the 
the tape measure test, make them 30 mil longer than that. That's assuming that you're going to lose 15 mil tying on at the pouch and 15 mil tying on to the catapult. If you're using clips and you're only going to lose 5 mil, then you don't add as much. So I hope you I hope you got that. What tapers should you use? What tapers should you cut your bands at? Typically, people will use between 15 mil and 25 mil wide cut bands and then they'll taper them after that for example a 15 mil band you'll have 15 mil to 10 mil 25 mil band you could have 25 mil to 20 mil why taper your bands because tapered bands are faster um, lighter and generally more efficient at launching your projectile with flat bands the more extreme your taper gets, the lighter the draw weight becomes and the faster that the shot will become, which defies the laws of physics. But it is a fact, it's been proven. I like to shoot eight, 10 and 12 mil tapers. So my three most common used jigs, you get these on AliExpress, AliExpress type in a slingshot band, cutting jig, something like that. I'll see if I can link it in the description, have a look. So my three most used jigs are 24 to 12, 22 to 12, and 20 to 12. So there's my eight, 10, and 12 mil tapers. I also use 19 to 11 and 18 to 10. Um, so if you wanna order these out of China, um, I've got another video of me using this. I'm going to post another video anyway. But I suggest at the start, get yourself, if you're just starting out brand new, get yourself a couple of different thicknesses and a steel ruler, a cephalium mat, a rotary cutter and experiment with tapers, experiment with active lengths, um, draw lengths, whatever you need to do. I'm not going to be able to tell you right now exactly what to do, sit down, what length to cut it, what taper to cut it. You know, every individual is a little bit different and what they prefer is a little bit different. Uh, I shot 0 0.8, 23 to 17 with 9.5 mil steel. There's nothing really wrong with that, but it's overkill. And I, I didn't need that. I was able to do the same thing that I was doing with my 0.8 band with 23 to 17. I was able to do the same thing with the same cut on a 0.66 band. Only I had a greater level of accuracy because I wasn't struggling to hold back a band set that was God knows how many pounds heavier. Um, that's another thing you want to, whenever you're getting into this, right, don't become power obsessed on it. It's easy for me to say that to you. I done it. Everybody does it. You just get power in your head and you're mad for it. Try and stay away from the power thing. You want to work on your accuracy. And the best way to work on your accuracy is with something that is on the lighter side, which is efficient. And a lighter setup will allow you to practice better for longer you won't suffer the same fatigue, you know, and you do suffer fatigue when you're shooting. But I feel like I'm getting off track here. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Let me know, I'd love to help you out as best I can. We'll get a bit of a discussion going down there. Um, I feel like I had something else important to say. It's totally left me. So, We've got our GZK bands, we've got our Precise bands, we've got our Smiggy bands, we've got Simple Shot brand Latex, we've got 100% Latex Jan Lowax band, which is quite good. But GZK for me, I, that's the one I recommend. I don't get anything from that. Um, and I hope that I've helped some of you guys. It's kind of a minefield when you're getting into this and it, it can be terribly confusing, but look, it is what it is. Um, you get your GZK bands, Four or five, use it for um, kids, use it for six, seven mil steel. 
0 0.5 to 0.62, use that for 8 mil steel, 0 0.62 to 0 0.8, use that for 9, 9.5 mil steel, which is 3 eighths, um, 0.8 and up for your heavier leads and things like that. Um, try not to get too bogged down with power um, and becoming power obsessed because it doesn't matter how much power you have, you need to be able to hit your target and you'll be able to hit your target more consistently with a, with a lighter draw. So, look guys, hope that helped. Um, really appreciate you guys' support. Sorry I haven't been that active. Um, really busy at home and at work and um, I've just got so much stuff on. My life seems a bit hectic at the minute. Thanks for all the guys that have been ordering t-shirts. If you do want a t-shirt, check them out there below. Um, I get a little bit of commission off every one, so it really helps support the channel if you do purchase a t-shirt. And I think they look pretty good. Um, so next upload, we'll probably be uploaded a couple of days after this. I'm going to show you how, how I tie my bands now, which is a, a way I've only just started doing and I'm, I'm really happy with it. So guys, listen, appreciate your views, appreciate your subscriptions, your comments, your likes, all the support I'm getting. Um, means a lot. Thank you very much and I will see you on the next one.